Welcome to part two of step 17, uh, <laughs> part B. I, uh, as I was saying uh, at the end of the last video, like the, the still point that you want to achieve is where you are no longer doing things on a basis of either making union happen or allowing union to happen. And the way to get there, which is something that we can learn from the star card, especially like look look into more meanings of the star card and the number seventeen. And and remember too that I mean seventeen is one plus seven, which equals eight, which goes back to the strength card too, which is like learning to tame ourselves, but without like it's weird to say, without domesticating ourselves. I mean, we're divine beings. We're supposed to enjoy our wildness and things like that. And we're, we're human, too. We are, like, so, so human. So we're going to have needs and wants and things like that. But, like, I think part of the beauty of the Twin Flame journey is that you we often start out in such a human place of need and desire and fear and ego and things like that and as we grow and as we glow up we learn to release so many of those things and then actually realize as we get closer and closer to achieving more stable emotional security and connection with ourselves and spirit that actually it's much more human to allow ourselves to have said feelings and so the irony is, in order to get to that still point where you're no longer doing things because you want union to come in or to force it to come in or running from it by, like, blocking them or being like, well, I'm done with them. I'm not waiting for them. I'm not giving any more to them. Or going the other way and being like, I will never give up on them. There's nothing they can do to hurt. I will always be here. I will wait forever and ever and ever. Or... I'm going to be with somebody else while they're out doing this and that because I deserve to be with somebody. Like, I mean, those are, val those are valid enough things, but they're, they show that you are still in the shadows of your, your work, of your journey, and you're still super attached to, to the idea of union. And as long as you are in that place, you're holding union out of place. And like, I mean, I, I say it in a whole bunch of different ways, but it still comes down to the same thing is union comes in when you least expect it because you're not in a state of expecting it. You know, you're not in a place where you're concerned about it at all. And not because you've like gotten over it, not because you're like, I've moved on. I got better things to do, like because you already have it, because you realize that, you know, 3D separation is a complete illusion, that any amount of separation is an illusion, that you are always together, you know, and, and there are many ways that you can get there. I, I illustrate a lot of them in the steps that are there. I've done a meditative journey to help you start getting there. I'll do some more that can help you get to the, the place where you feel like, you know, you're never separate. But the truth is we all have to find our own way there. And sometimes it'll be something similar at work for someone else. And sometimes you're meant to create a whole new way that can help a whole new set of people that, that have trouble finding their own way. Either way, Part of what makes this journey so beautiful is that, you know, when you really are a twin flame, even if you're in a relationship with your twin flame, like you could be married to them, you could have been married to them for decades, and you're still never going to have full true union until you have full true union with yourself, because that's a large part of what the twin flame journey is about, is no longer worrying about fear of abandonment or fear of rejection or whether or not you have a partner or you're always getting affirmations of love or quality time or validation or never being triggered or things like that to where you're in the, the place to where you're like you enjoy the down moments as much as the up moments even like even though in the down moments they're not great but like when you come out of them you realize you learn something and when you're really truly embracing the reflection of your twin, you know, you're, you're like, oh, okay, so they, they're stuck in this place doing this thing, where's my reflection, and you look for it, and you find it, and you don't beat yourself up for it, you just go, oh, that's great, I can work on that, because you've achieved a still point of recognizing that you do always reflect each other, and not just each other, you reflect anyone, anyone who comes in your vicinity is in your vibration for a reason, and as long as they're in your vibration, you are reflecting something to do with them. So even if it's like a kid at a grocery store who says something rude to you that triggers you, there's something in you that is reflecting 
that rudeness, that um, the arrogance, the <laughs> the youthfulness, the <laughs> whatever it is, there's something in there that's reflecting that. And when you get to the point to where you you see that in everything and everyone around you, you see the good stuff too. Like if you know every time you park somewhere, you see really fancy, you know, high, high caliber vehicles, that's in your vibration too. And you're reflecting that stuff. You're, you're feeling good self-worth. You're attracting abundance, things like that. And when you realize and, and you treat everything that way, you are, you are rarely triggered by much of anything. And that's when you start getting into the cobwebs of things and, and you, you've dealt with most of the deeper stuff. You've healed a lot and you just, you know, there's little cobwebs of things. And then you'll get to a point to where you actually start manifesting new things. Or if your twin has a few more things to work out than, than you did, then when they start working on them, you'll notice something completely new comes in and, and throws you off because it's something new, but it's actually a higher quality problem than what you've ever dealt with before and then that itself will create kind of a level of amusement and excitement because you're no longer worried about those moments when you might go into dark night of soul or you might be spun out a little bit or triggered you realize that all of it leads to healing and that all of it is something that you can then if you choose to you know talk about with others and that spirit will bring you people who are in you know there are a few timelines not behind you per se but off from you and that they could use they could use to hear the story of how you got out of a similar situation then you help them and then that creates ripples in the collective consciousness and then starts to heal that because that's really a lot of what the twin flame journey is about and the, the more I see and talk with others about their journeys and see my own journey and things like that the more that I see that you know it in learning to love ourselves so completely that we're neither worried about our twin flame union or our families or or death or sickness or anything like that, the more that we can enjoy our lives and the more that we can enjoy our lives, the less we're worried about getting caught up in, in codependent entanglements or whether or not we interact with karmics and, you know, we don't worry about loneliness. We just, we feel at one with pretty much everything around us. And the more we feel like that, the less we hold on to things that, to almost well, anything, but especially to things that are not good for us. And then we start to become that beacon that other people can look at and go, wow, I mean, look at that. They, you know, this person went through all these downtimes and all these things that happened and they're rising up. I bet I could do that too, you know, or when we share a story with someone, whether it's our best friend or a complete stranger or even our twin. And, you know, we're like, you know, when I went through that thing, I realized this and I did this and I, I released it and I gave myself the apology and then they do it and then it works for them. And then they pass that on to somebody else. That's part of the mission work that you get into and that affects the rest of the world just as much as like when uh, somebody starts you know passing on uh, rumors or conspiracies of fearful things happening the more people hear that and think about it the more it manifests well it's the same thing the other way the more that we focus on healthy self-love and we heal that part of us that feels like conceited for choosing ourselves or like we're not loving someone enough or we fear rejection or when you know we allow ourselves to embrace our eccentricities and absurdities because we no longer worry about who we will like us and who won't because we know that the pe the right people that that are going to love us for who we are are going to find us when we are ourselves and they're not if we're pretending to be somebody else and the people that weren't ever really going to like us and that were just kind of karmic learning lessons they're going to go away a lot faster when we're not worried about being rejected by them and we're, we're not acting and pretending to be somebody else just to keep just to keep people happy you know like I've known a fair amount of people that, you know, like there will be say somebody that I'm like, I'm just going to say, take them off my social media because I don't, I don't connect with them. I don't agree with them. And it just kind of keeps me trapped in a weird cycle of resentment and judgment that I don't want to sit with. I'd rather just not have that in my vibration at all. And I'm going to disconnect with them. I'm going to release my, my feelings towards them and just let it go. Like I don't, we don't need to be in each other's vibrations anymore. And I was only doing it to avoid person A, B, or C thinking that I was mean or judgmental or whatever thing like that. And I'm going to go towards having healthy boundaries. And I know plenty of other people that don't do that. They will hold on to every person in any sort of social connection because they 
they worry that like they can't even name what people they're worried about will you know reject them or not like them or they, they'll just say well I'm worried that um, these people will make me explain to them why it was that I unfriended so and so and even if they have like a hundred reasons why it's better to release them and 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 not have that connection they're more worried about the one reason that somebody else might think that they're a, a judgmental person for releasing somebody who at least for them was a toxic connection or maybe that hurt many of their friends or family members things like that and they hold on to that because some invisible force of people they don't they can't even name who and they don't want to you ask them about it they just get upset and they hold on to that and like when we get into a place to where we don't do that anymore we give people like that permission to do that themselves and to not worry about it and and to see that it doesn't really matter like the people that would care about you doing that you know it, it's it's a lot like other things too like if you have an opinion about various different political things or social things and stuff like that and you you don't want to speak them because you're worried about the people that may or, that might not like it versus being a voice for those people who also feel the same and feel alone because they don't want to speak up when you become that voice that speaks up you give a lot more people permission to speak their truth and to love themselves and to not worry about rejection especially when you get responses to an unpopular opinion and you're not triggered you're like that's okay it's all right to have you know uh, opposite opinions I don't have to change my opinion just because you don't like it and you don't have to change yours just because I don't like it. And neither one of us have to not like the other. We could still peacefully coexist in that way. And likewise, you know, it comes to the same with talking about your twin flame journey or um, any, you know, eccentric activities that you really like when you're no longer afraid to be who you are, you know, regardless of whether it's your best friend or complete strangers that might go, oh, I don't really like who you are. When you're not worried about who might not like you, you give other people permission to like themselves, whether or not anybody doesn't like them. And that ripples out. And then that creates more opportunities for more people to love themselves and I tell you what one thing that's definitely been confirmed for me is that part of why so many twin flames have been awakened and even even a lot of people that are not twin flames but they're getting on the twin flame journey is because right now what we sorely lack in in our human culture is self-love and self-respect and self-esteem and just an appreciation for who we are and that's part of the reason why we don't take care of the earth around us why we don't you know <laughs> why we get into consumerism all the time there's nothing wrong with wanting things or buying